Uh, hello, it's Bruce here again. Um, I don't really do unveilings of packages normally, but uh, this one was waiting for me when we just got back last night from uh, a week in Florida by our son. And it was during that time, sitting around his pool and I was looking online, when I saw uh, this item pop up. Uh, <clears throat> I guess you could say that I'm a uh, member of the Society for the Preservation of Mantuas and Varnies, especially if they are the old die cast units. So when I saw this one pop up, I just uh, couldn't resist. It was uh, $18, including shipping. They were honest that it did not run, which is not of concern to me. And I saw that, uh, I believe, one of the uh, steps on the front of the loco is missing. And again, that's what preservation is all about, fixing things like that. So let's, let's see what I got for my $18. Um, since it comes with a tender, and I have another project that's going to need a tender, the way I looked at it is for $18. If nothing else, I got the tender that I need for that other project, so we will see what we got. Well packaged. I got a loco kit recently that I spent a lot more money for and wasn't packaged half as well. And I paid for extra for the shipping on that one. I appreciate the packing job on this one. Uh, let's see. I remember when I uh, sent the owner a little instant message to see whether it was still available. He once again went out of his way to warn me that it didn't run. I said, yeah, not a problem. And it's uh, always looking for a project. So, let's see. Oops. Let me move this enough to get my scissors out of here. And then make sure that you are still seeing what, uh, what I'm opening. Yes, you are. Okay, let's see what we got here. Almost like trying to uh, open up some of the pill bottles on my medicine here. Almost enough to defeat you. Oh, we got a little 040, and it's tender, and I was correct that one of the steps is uh, broken off, which will give me uh, an excuse for building another pilot down in there. Uh, as long as all the drive rods are there and in place, I'm pretty well good to go. So I think that uh, it's looking good. And I will, as I get to this project a little later, um, show you how it progresses. But uh, it's pretty much what I expected. And for $18, like I say, if all I do is use this uh, 
tender on my uh, project that I have, uh, it'll be worth the money. So you'll see this one again soon. Okay, some little time later now, um, I took the shell off of this little mantua and uh, put some leads to the brushes and got some momentary movement from the motor, so there's some life in there. Um, however, as I look at the uh, commutator there, it's black, and I'm going to clean that up, see if I can make it look uh, nice and shiny again, clean out the slots on the commutator, uh, add a little bit of lubrication, and then I'll put the juice back on the uh, motor and see if she runs. So uh, right now some hope here and I'll get back. Okay I want to just uh, show you um, some progress on cleaning the uh, commutator that the brushes brush against. Uh, you can see I think, let's see if we can get this to come into focus here. Okay, so there's one that I spent about uh, 20 seconds with my fiberglass brush and that's the next one over and you can see how black it is and how shiny that is. So just watch a minute while I show you the magic of using uh, one of these fiberglass uh, brushes on it. So just rub it across the commutator here. Get that built up carbon off of there. And now I think you can see that two of the faces are now nice and shiny and the other three are still black. So I'm going to continue to work on that and uh, be back. A few minutes later, with uh, the commutator cleaned off and uh, using a toothpick to uh, get any carbon from between the uh, slots, between the uh, parts of the commutator, um, cleaning off the brushes with a paper towel, uh, and lubricating uh, the bearings on the engine, and picking out, and I don't know if you can see, uh, the fuzz here on the, uh, yeah, I think you can see it. That was wrapped around the uh, uh, the uh, shaft on the motor. None of that stuff helps. So, uh, with all of that, and uh, let's see if we have a uh, running motor here. And indeed we do. And it's running quite smoothly, actually. All right, well with that, the rest of the restoration uh, can take place, so uh, I will proceed. But uh, next step will be to uh, lubricate everything down here in the uh, drive gear and the see if there's any uh, fuzz down there. I have imagined at some point in its life it ran on carpet. Um, lubricate the side rods and so forth and then uh, we can start on the more cosmetic things. But right now we know that the motor's good and if the motor's good the little guy can get restored. So uh, as I say I firm believer that these little old varnies and mantuas should be brought back to working order and uh, show up on the layout from time to time. So, see you soon with another installment. Well, one of the next uh, discoveries was that uh, even with the motor removed, I could not get these uh, drive wheels to budge. Turned out the problem was uh, one of the 
uh, valve piston rods here was uh, locked in place with gunk and uh, working a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol I've gotten those working good. Now I haven't lubricated yet I just wanted to get them working and the next thing I'm going to do is remove the base plate and uh, see what's going on inside and do some lubrication down there and work my way out. So uh, progress anyway at this point. Um, let's just see what happens when I remove that base plate. If there's any surprises down there or not. So far all the screw heads have been in good shape so over the years that this thing has been in use and it did see quite a bit of use because one of those uh, wait a second here let me just finish this here Oh, looks pretty good anyway uh, clean it up a little bit with a little bit of alcohol and then add my own oil and uh, put it back together but anyway what I was saying is uh, one of these brushes was fairly well worn so uh, this motor had uh, quite a bit of use behind it so it isn't like it's sat on the shelf all its life but uh, yeah, that's starting to run a little smoothly, so I'll clean up uh, some of these axle areas with a little bit of uh, alcohol in the Q-tip, re-oil it, and be back to you later. Okay, just a little bit of cleaning down there by the uh, axles, like I said, and you can see there was a good amount of uh, dirt and grime down there, which... Uh, I got off between a paper towel and a q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and some LaBelle's grease and oil and let's see how this runs. So far so good. Running pretty smooth from something that was dead on arrival. <clears throat> and that's why when I work on these old engines and you can buy them fairly inexpensively when they say they don't run and you can see on the plastic bag that I uh, got from them they were Mantua HO locomotive with tender does not run and uh, they sell them inexpensively because they don't run and it is rare for me to get one where it isn't just uh, dirt and grime and uh, needs a good cleaning and uh, and you have yourself a runner so okay this is uh, pretty much the end of any mechanical work that I have to do on the uh, locomotive and in the restoration so uh, sometime in the near future I will uh, post a video that shows some of the more cosmetic restoration and uh, see where we go from there.